guys, welcome back to another one of my YouTube videos. Uh, tonight we have another special. So I did rings last time, obviously that went down uh, really, really well. So I walked you through the tips and tricks, everything to do with rings. Uh, tonight is necklaces. I ain't got any necklaces on, well done, you've noticed. Um, but all my necklaces are just hung uh, just over there. So I'm gonna talk you through, because I find it, I think it's gonna be easier for me to physically hold the necklace in front of you and then talk you through said necklace. Uh, I'll give you a couple of shots at the end obviously with me wearing them all um, but yeah this is tonight's special necklaces obviously it's a good one I love my rings I've told you about those um, a couple of weeks ago so hopefully tonight it's going to be equally as good and I want to talk to you the tips tricks and everything to do with wearing necklaces. Right so I have all my said necklaces right here um, obviously it does look like a bit of a mess because I'm actually holding them up but you, as you can see there's quite a lot of them. Um, I absolutely adore necklaces, I adore the silver um, material obviously in necklaces as well. It matches my ring so obviously I said the best thing you can do um, obviously when you start wearing rings and jewellery and necklaces is to keep to a colour scheme. I've obviously like gone through the the lesson learned to get to the colour scheme because I remember when I first started to wear necklaces and any sort of uh, jewellery at all I sort of used to miss like mismatch and sort of like just put things together it never looked that good so I had like gold, I had like uh, little turquoise rings everything didn't really seem to match it wasn't really stylized in a certain way so the, the biggest tip I have is obviously to stick to a colour scheme or a material so obviously I love my silver so a lot of my rings are silver, stern silver, um, 925 silver, and obviously my necklaces are like that as well. He's back. He's got one off the absolute carnage which is going on on the floor. Uh, right, this is probably one of my first necklaces I got. This is a this is a really sort of like special one to me. Uh, so I'll give you a closer little look at this one. So this one is a pie disc. So it's obviously shaped, obviously how it gets its name, like a pie. It's got a little centre hole there and it's got some font on there as well. I actually got this necklace from New York City Library and it's a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote. It says, what lies behind us and what lies in front of us a tiny matters compared to what lies within us. So it's a killer quote. It was the first time I visited New York City. Um, I saw this in the library. Obviously it was silver. It's pretty much one of my first like meaningful necklaces, which I absolutely loved. Um, but yeah, it's an absolute killer piece. Absolutely love it. And it obviously reminds me of a time that I went somewhere, visited, and it was like a little token for obviously when I put this on, it always reminds me of New York City. Um, so it's a killer piece, absolutely love it. That's what I said about rings. So obviously getting rings rather than just going somewhere and going, all right, I'm gonna buy some rings. It's always nice to get a ring for an occasion or obviously to remind you of something. So obviously I traveled to New York, I got, I got this. And every time I put it on, it reminds me of New York. So obviously it's always nice to have a little significant story behind a bit of jewellery, that's what I find. So obviously I'll come towards the camera again. So yeah, you can see it's a little bit, uh, hopefully this will focus, um, it's a little bit dirty, but um, obviously the polish up really, really well. Silver, just because I've worn it a lot, especially over the summertime and the warmer weather, they always tend to get a little bit dirty. Um, but another obviously tip I told you about with the rings, I said I've got a polishing cloth. You can get these from any sort of jewellers, department stores. Um, it's basically just a cloth with a cleaning agent in and if you spend like 10, 15 minutes, this is what I always tend to do every three months or so, obviously depending on obviously how hot it is. I obviously love going through and polishing everything up. So this um, cloth obviously with the detergent in brings off all the dirt, brings off all the grime and it makes your jewellery literally look like it's it's fresh from the shop. It's just been bought. Yeah, the polish up really, really well, um, especially all silver. But yeah, I absolutely love this one. It's a, it's a killer one and it actually sits quite high on my neck. That's another sort of tip I probably will give you with jewellery. It's quite bad when everything sits the same level because it all sort of like, it all covers everything else up. So if you've got a really special necklace and it all sits at the same level as all your other necklaces, um, you won't really be able to see it. Mine, I can sort of just get around that because quite a few of them are different lengths. So it's all to do with the length of the chain, obviously, around your neck. So some of mine are quite short. This is probably one of the shortest one I have. And some of them, mainly, most of them are quite long. It's a little bit like I always think of wearing a t-shirt. I never really wear uh, round neck t-shirts. I always tend to wear like 
really low cut t-shirts or shirts I always unbutton really really far down that's just because I like having stuff like which draws the eye down when you wear a, obviously a, a tighter chain a shorter chain it draws the eye up to about obviously a higher level so if you like your t-shirts plunged down or if you wear your shirts quite unbuttoned like myself I'd always tend to go for a longer necklace just because it draws the eye further down and it's not like really restricting it's not quite tight um, it's a thing it's a thing basically I don't really like but yeah this is the shortest necklace I have in the collection right getting on to another quite short necklace here I've got a stack of sort of three coins um, I think two of these coins are really really old and the other is it came with the actual necklace but hopefully if this will focus in these are old Catholic or sort of Christian symbols which are on the coins I don't know if you'll be able to make that out hopefully it'll focus in I know it's quite small um, but yeah these coins are super old so I've got two which are really old and one that came with the original necklace um, the two which were really old as I spoke with about in the rings, there was these, you always got rings sitting in a box, you've always got like coins sitting in a box, well I have in my house anyway, um, so obviously it's always great to ask obviously other family members, ask them first obviously can I have this or can I wear this, do you mind, and if they're kind enough obviously to give you said little coin or little necklace, it's a really really good way first of all to remember them, obviously it's a gift from them they give you, and it's really really nice to obviously add to uh, say a necklace you already have, like a little bit like a charm. This is how I trapped this uh, necklace. There was already one on there, and I've just added a couple of coins which sort of have a similar meaning to the to the coin which was already on there. But yeah, coins I absolutely love. Coins are so cool because um, of the print, the symbols, or like the really cool heads from the past. There's always a date on there as well, which is quite nice. So yeah, these coins are just a, a mismatch of sort of coins which I always felt like they were they basically they were from the same box and they've always stuck around together for years and years and years. Um, so I thought I'd add them to this necklace. Again it's quite a high one. This is probably the high this is probably even higher than that one. It sits a tiny little bit above the pie disc. Um, but since I've got quite a lot I can get away with them because some are high, some of them are dead low and overall it just looks like right there's a lot going on. But it's it's cool, believe me. I think the more the better when it comes to jewellery. Um, the better stories, the better, you know, obviously it just looks it just looks so cool when you've got a lot on and the best thing ever obviously as I said with the rings comes with a soundtrack so obviously when I've got all my necklaces on as well especially the necklaces it's like when you've got a biker jacket on when you've got that sort of um, belt and the belt hits against say your jeans or obviously the belt on your trousers and it makes a jangly sort of effect and noise um, that's what I find with rings bracelets and obviously when I've got all my necklaces on it comes with a soundtrack so basically it's such a cool sort of like thing to have when you're walking down the street obviously with your outfit so you've got a colour outfit on but then say there's a bit of a sound there as well there's like a different sense happening along with said outfit I think it's always cool it's always good and it makes I think it just elevates any outfit if you if you can obviously style your outfit up yeah that's cool that's good but if you can add like little final flourishes to the outfit which it makes it so individual and so sort of um, unique I think that's the best way uh, obviously and that's what jewellery can do it can just elevate the outfit to make it look really individual really cool and very very unique uh, this necklace is a really really special one as well hopefully that plectrum will be able to focus in there and I've got one one normal safety pin and one solid silver safety pin on there as well um, just for double the security with this little plectrum piece um, so I got this plectrum when I was in Ibiza it was the first time I went to Ibiza two years ago and basically um, met this guy called Diego who we were doing shoot with um, obviously we were using his hotels to shoot as a background and we were using he came out on the shoot as well he's probably the coolest guy in Ibiza um, he drives a red Ford Mustang he's an absolute legend he loves his rock and roll and uh, the first time we met him we went to his offices on the island and basically he runs a night uh, in Ibiza and in Barcelona as well because I think I've been at the Barcelona one um, called Rock Nights and basically this little plectrum 
gives you, uh, it's like a Q jumper and it's sort of like a free drink set. That's what he sort of described it as when we first met him. But to be honest, I absolutely love it. So it's a, I don't think it's silver, it's just a really, really nice, like cool metal piece, but it always reminds me of that time we went to Ibiza. So it was my first time in Ibiza, as I mentioned, but it's such a cool little story. So basically, I think it's like, if you have this on, you want to give them to a certain like select friends and uh, obviously family, but I think it just basically entitles you to like jump jump a couple of queues um, on this certain night in Ibiza and hopefully gets you free drinks. To be honest, I've never tested it out because I've not been back to Ibiza since I initially went two years ago, but I plan to go back to Ibiza and uh, hopefully that little plectrum will get me some uh, get me some cool places. But yeah, he's an absolute legend. He kindly give us them straight away. Um, is a little token, um, but literally I put mine on like there and then and I was like that is probably the coolest thing ever. So I absolutely love that little plectrum and it always reminds me of the time we went to Ibiza, it's got a cool story behind it as well which all jewellery should. Um, getting on to the silver little safety pin, obviously safety pins yeah they're functional but this one is actually a solid silver one. Um, this is from the place where I mentioned I got quite a few of my rings and obviously necklaces as well. So this place is called Pantheveur, Paris, Quentin, again, total legend. You have to check them out. So I've had a few messages anyway from people, obviously you watched the ring one, so they've checked them out, really, really cool. Uh, yeah, he's a legend, super cool, designs all his jewellery in Paris. Um, he's got a couple of shops in Paris, I think one in a hotel and one in a standalone. But it's obviously a little bit different to the... <clears throat> the normal, you know, when you see someone and they've got rings on, it's probably the great frog because they're huge, they're big, everyone knows about them. This is a more unique, um, sort of underground, like really, uh, that's what I prefer. If, I, if I've got a ring on and if someone asks me where it's from, or just like it's a little bit different, you know what I mean? It's not mainstream. Great frog is a really good place to start with necklaces and rings, don't get me wrong, but um, Quentin's stuff is just so individual, it's designed there, it's designed by him in Paris, it's got awesome meaning behind and it's probably like obviously the materials and it's probably the best jewellery around I could ever recommend. It's so cool, you've got to check it out, it's killer. Um, so that's one of his tiny little um, safety pins but I think it just adds to this so I didn't actually have anything on me to attach this. Uh, to the necklace at the time, the Ibiza Plectrum. So obviously I had one of Quentin's safety pins and I was like, oh, that'd be cool just for the time being. I can, I can put it on straight away. Um, but that's just stayed like that ever since I put it on two years ago. So it's just like one of those things where I had it in my pocket, I had it on me. Um, so I thought I'd just add to it. It's just a little bit of personality. It's a little bit of a story and it tells tells a, I don't know, a little story, a, a meaning of a certain time. Yeah, cool little necklace. I absolutely love it. Right, since we were talking about Quentin, I'll show you one of his more bigger pieces. Um, so this is a really cool, like, all-seeing eye hand. This is the second bit of Quentin's jewellery um, I got. I just got this for Christmas, just gone. So he uses coins on quite a lot of his items as well. So all his coins are from sourced from different places around the world. The best thing about his shop, I just thought of stories, I'll come back. He's got like a little waiting area, a little like cool sort of sofa area and he's got these candles on this coffee table and around the candles in this big sort of bowl he's just got coins from all over the world. So I think it's like a thing to do in a shop, like if you've got a few coins on you, probably if you visit Paris from a different country, just add to his, add to his collection, it's so bloody cool. Um, so I absolutely, I absolutely love that. So that looks like it's a British uh, coin there, so it's got King George on it and it says it's from 1936 so he presses a few of these coins as well or he uses originals but look at that hand look at the nail detail so cool really really got to hope it's focusing for you um, and he always puts it you can get a few different chains in Quentin shop so we can put it on any chain you want so he does longer ones obviously which I like to go for or he does the shorter chains as well all his stuff is solid silver really really cool and just the attention to detail and the the care he takes over his pieces and the design is just absolutely amazing. So yeah, this is one of his pieces, really, really nice, and it looks really cool on. Right, I may as well do Quentin's pieces all together. So this is my, this is the first necklace I got from Quentin's shop. So when I visited Paris, it was probably about two years ago as well, I really I super want to go back. I wanted to go back this summer, but obviously with everything going on, I couldn't. 
Um, but yeah, this is probably one of my favourite pieces of jewellery um, I have. Um, again, from Quentin, so it's quite a long um, necklace length uh, to it, the, to the train. With the trains I like, I do like a thin chain, so you can see this is quite detailed, this is all the links are quite small. Uh, I don't really like massively thick chains. Um, I always tend to go for a, like a chain like this. The previous one was slightly thicker, um, but yeah, it's. I always try to go for quite fine chains. I think fine chains look better. Um, but yeah, the attention to detail on this piece is just so, so bloody good. So as you can see, it's a hand. Um, it's even got little rings on the finger itself, and it is holding a column. So a column is one of Quentin's sort of... I don't know, I think he sort of bases a lot of his things around columns. It's like, he, sa he said it's it's a symbol not that many people use. Obviously you see it in architecture all the time, in old architecture, um, but Quentin uses the symbol for his shop, so I think his logo has the symbol behind it as well. Yeah, Quentin always says he chose the symbol because it's a symbol obviously you see in architecture quite a lot, but it's also a symbol that signifies power, it signifies wealth, it symbolises, you know, when you see a column, it's from something grand, it's from something big, there's a lot, it's quite extravagant, there's a lot of money spent. If, as soon as you see a column on something or a building, that building is, it means something, it's got a lot of gravitas, uh, it's just a big symbol to have. That's why Quentin uses the columns in his brand, but this, this is probably the most detailed, cool, um, sort of, just cool piece I have. As you can see the little ring on the hand there. I really hope this is uh, focusing. And just the attention to detail on there is just absolutely awesome. So, so cool. And it's got a really, really nice link to it as well. So instead of just to tie at the back, these two just fold in and the, the hold the necklace at the bottom there. So yeah, really, really cool piece. Absolutely love this. And it just, it sits so, so well on the neck. And it just looks so individual, so cool. Uh, yeah, this is my first Tantaver piece and probably my favourite. We've got another little short necklace here. Uh, this little short necklace I picked up last year in Barcelona. Um, so as you can see, it's got this um, symbol is the Black Madonna. Uh, I actually found this. This is another sort of little cool story. So obviously it reminds me of the time I went to Barcelona, um, but also I got it from, it was just from a, like a vintage thrift store and he had loads of stuff, he had some, so many like cool clothes, jackets, obviously it was a little bit too warm for that, it was in Barcelona in the summer, um, but I found this like little shoe box and I was like surely there'll be something in the bottom of here, that's dropped, it's so small, it was obviously it wasn't on its chain, the chain I actually have found, I just had it in the family, so it's a nice really fine silver chain, um, but it was just this tiny little tiny little piece I found in the bottom. It was so grubby as well. It was pretty much as grubbier as the back and you couldn't see any of the lettering. There's a tiny, tiny bit of lettering. I think it's too small to probably focus on camera, but there's a tiny little bit of lettering. And I think it basically just says, it's found on um, Montserrat, Montserrat Mountain. And it, getting back to the little story, um, it was this shoebox and this little piece had fallen right the way to the bottom of the shoebox. But it was weird that I only, I mean, I'd not normally rake through loads of bits and bobs but I was like there's definitely going to be something in here and I found that so it was it was really really cool and I think the guy just didn't even know he had it it was just in the box he was like oh five five euros so I got that and I think I don't know if it's silver it's not got any markings on but I think it's very very old um, but yeah I got that polished it up with the cloth and it came up really really nice and it even came up with words so behind all the grime and the dirt it was actually like pressed words behind there as well and that piece always reminds me when I visited Barcelona and the little cool story behind it as well. We've got another sort of um, religious coin here. So this is a little Roman coin and it's got some religious figure on the back there and the opposite side of the coin. Uh, I've always loved my coins, obviously just because of the symbols, the dates, and there's always sort of like something cool about a coin. I think that's why Quentin sort of uses quite a lot in this stuff as well. Um, but yeah, this is not one of his. This is just a coin. Again, it was in the house, um, but it was meant to be on a necklace because it had that tiny, had a tiny little 
See that little holder there at the top? So that's been obviously put on there, uh, soldered onto the coin. And obviously then you can attach a necklace to it. Um, so this is a really cool one. It sits in a really nice way. It sits where all my other jewellery sort of doesn't. So you can see this coin straight off, like directly through all the other chains and everything uh, on there. I'll show you this coin at the end when I've got all my jewellery on. But yeah, again, it's just a length. So you've got to suss out, if you're going to wear a lot, where the jewellery sits. So this one will sit around about here, but if they all sat around that sort of same level, it would be quite hard to see. So it's quite nice when you get a bit of jewellery, make sure you get the right length, so they all have their sort of, their time to shine type of thing. Right, we've got two left, believe it or not. Obviously I do wear quite a lot of jewellery. Uh, this coin but we've got it on a ring. So the story about this is I found it in a really, really cool antique fair in Manchester. Uh, it's an old, I want to say, yeah, Queen or it's someone Elizabeth. So it's an old English coin. Um, but this one I actually attached to quite a longer style um, necklace because this ring I absolutely love, right? But it doesn't fit on any of my fingers. I don't really want to lose a ring which is on my finger, so I've not really got the space for it. I wanted to get it sort of made wider, but then I thought, you know what, I can just wear it as a as a necklace and sort of double loop it through uh, a chain. So yeah, this is a really cool ring, I absolutely love. Uh, again, it's silver, the guy wasn't in at the time, so when there's someone not in on an antiques fair, you always get someone else to like sort of do the deal. So I think this was like, it was cheap anyway for silver, and it was such a cool bloody ring. But I think I got it for like 10 quid. So this is it, it's like such an old ring. It's mounted in such a nice way, and it's it's definitely worth more. But this is it, if you shop thrift, it was like that Black Madonna um, symbol, which I found in Barcelona. You get things so cheap, so they're so cool, they're so unique because pretty much no one else has got one. I bet no one else in the world has got this ring on a chain, which is the way around the neck. But uh, yeah, it's probably better to get things like this, or like family items, which I always say. The, the more individual rings, the more individual pieces, um, because no one else will have them. They're not mass produced, they're not mass marketed. And if you get it, you probably have a cooler story behind it as well. So obviously if any rings have little symbols printed on the inside, Obviously some of them might be too small to actually see, but mainly that signifies they're probably made of a certain material, gold, silver, blah, blah, blah. Obviously you've got your 925, which is a good quality silver to find and to, to buy. Um, this again, I think it's got some some really small sort of indented deals in there. I can't actually make out what the C, uh, yeah, I think there's a, there's a couple of number deals, but normally you have to have a magnifying glass. I'm obviously not a jeweler, so I don't really know what any of them mean. Um, but I know obviously when you do see the printed um, symbols, that probably more more than likely means you've got a good quality product. The last one I have to run through, hopefully before my camera stops again, um, is this chain here. Uh, so this chain is quite a chunky chain. It's quite a sort of a biggish, biggish link chain to my normal ones. It's got no hands on, it's got no symbols on, it's got no coins on. It's pretty much obviously just the chain itself, um, but it's really cool. I pretty much wear this every day and it's just a nice chain to have on. It's got quite a nice uh, look to it when it's on and it lies on a really nice level um, but yeah it's a really really cool necklace again this one is from I think it's from my like nan's mum used to wear it um, so it's quite uh, it's got quite an age to it it's a family obviously bit of jewelry which has been passed down passed down passed down so obviously if you as I said with rings if you in your family know there's jewelry in boxes where you could wear it it's always quite nice to ask if you can wear it or if you can have it. And then obviously you get something completely individual, completely sort of uh, unique to what you'd normally find, obviously online or obviously in stores or even little independent jewelry. It's probably nothing gonna be like one you've had around, which has been passed down generation to generation. This one's got quite a lot of weight in it as well. It's quite a weighty, chunky style necklace. As I say, the links are quite big and they're quite cool, really, really nice. But uh, yeah, it's just a nice bit of jewelry to wear. Um, yeah, so just wrapping up, 
since I've done it before, I sort of want to say. Um, yeah, so those are my tips and tricks in jewellery. Try and match your colour scheme. Try and get different sizes necklaces so they always like lie on different levels so they can all like, so you can show off every single piece you have rather than them all being caught at the same level where it's quite hard. It's sort of, especially when you get like a heavy necklace, if you walk, it always hit, it'll always like hit off your chest in a certain way. So don't get really, really chunky, huge bits of jewellery because some of them are quite uncomfortable to wear as well. Um, obviously all mine are quite fine, they're all quite low and they all like obviously differ um, on length so they're all lying at a different sort of, uh, you know, different sort of level to each other so that's a good tip as well. So don't buy anything hugely chunky because it probably will be uncomfortable. Try and get like, stick to a fineness of chains. So I've got some really thin chains and I've got some chunky chains but not overly massive huge chains it's always quite nice i always think the finer the more detailed the better um and what else always have a little bit of jewelry that tells a story so i've got my abitha obviously little plectrum little guitar plectrum which obviously reminds me of a story the first one the new york one reminds me of a time i visited a really cool city i absolutely love so jewelry with meaning behind is so much better than jewelry just bought yeah you know i mean if it's a gift if it's been given, if you got it from a certain place, if you got a story to tell someone uh, about it when they go, oh, I love that piece, what is it about? It's so nice to have a little a little anecdote uh, to go along with it. Um, but yeah, obviously the soundtrack, as I mentioned, were rings, bracelets, it's always nice to obviously have as well so you can hear you coming before you can actually see you coming. And obviously, as I just say, um, it just elevates an outfit so yeah you can dress well you look cool but when you add a little bit of jewelry when you add that final flourish of individualism and individuality you sort of it's just you build a cooler pitch you got you got like it's like you've got more stories to tell which you sort you have sort of you know if you pick your jewelry well if you've got some killer stories it's really really nice to tell people about the stories inspire people to get their own jewelry to tell their own stories and it's always nice to just be individual sort of not just in dress sense in pretty much everything to the end of your fingers with jewelry so yeah it's always cool to be obviously who you are didn't think i was gonna end on that but i think i probably will um yeah so killer jewelry love my obviously rings love my necklaces and hopefully there'll be a few more of these specials coming up don't know what the next one will be like uh, or on but hopefully you enjoyed it Hopefully you've learned a little bit as well, and hopefully it's inspired you to start your jewellery collection. There we go, we said it. Uh, yeah, cheers guys for watching this one, hope you enjoyed it. And subscribe if you're new, give me a like if you like the old ramblings about the necklaces, and I'll see you soon, cheers. Yeah, I'll just put this in now because I actually forgot to put them all on and wear them. But yeah, as you can see I've got my uh, jewellery on now, along with a lot of hair, which I've just pulled from my head. Um, putting these on but yeah as you can see they all sort of look really really sweet on they've all got the same different levels they're all together they're, you can see them all and with the rings as well i just think it just it just adds so much more to any outfit so you can get a closer look i knew that would be super hard to show and i didn't want to describe them that way that's why i've definitely done the right thing by taking them all off and then showing you because that would have been absolute hell uh, describing each individual necklace like that uh, yeah so i hope you like them Hope you find them cool and um, that's my necklace collection. <laughs>